Welcome to our very first football frenzy of the year. I'm Glenn Kinley. And I'm Lainey Gerber. Now, Glenn, for the second year in a row, Friday doesn't just kick off with high school football. It's a little unconventional, and we have college football tonight, too. Yeah, usually it is just high school on these Friday nights, but for the folks that are at home watching, they know that KU is also playing tonight, so it's not just high school like last year. The Jayhawks start on a Friday. We've got college ball to get to before the high school highlights. Let's do that first. Yeah, it's year two of the Lance Leipold era. Just signed an extension, so to Lawrence we go. Let's go. KU hosting Tennessee Tech. Hawks a 28-point favorite. Can they start the year 1-0? We will find out. Jalen Daniels looking right. He knows what he wants. He wants Lawrence Arnold. He comes oh, across yeah. the field, makes the catch, sets up a run. You know who they're giving it to. Devin Neal finds a hole, breaks the tackle, kicks in the speed. A perfect formula for six. Count it. Jayhawks up 7-0 on their own side of the field this time. Daniels going for it. Perfect ball to Quentin Skinner. Just like that, KU is inside the 10. Handed off to Daniel Hyshaw. So many good running backs on this team. O-line gets him space. He finds the end zone as well. 14-0. Tennessee Tech trying to kick a field goal. Man, they packed the booth. Pack the field booth. goal is blocked by Kobe Bryant. That's actually his name. He's not wearing number 24 or number 8. He's got to be. Regardless, though, he takes it all the way for a house call on the block field goal. KU just dominates in their season opener, 56 to 10, the final. That's a pretty good start to the year, Lane. That's a great start to the year, especially with how many guys they were able to use in this one game. It wasn't yeah. just the same two Get or three. Get everybody scoring. some reps. Yeah. You have to imagine the coaching staff's happy with that. They talked about how much more comfortable they are, and. They showed it tonight. So. No, definitely. Live West Virginia uh, next week for them. Yeah, he's earning that extension. That's right. <laughs> One of that college shock. It's Friday. Let's get to the Friday Night Lights. There are some great matchups tonight. See if we can keep the KU mojo going. Of course. We start with the back-to-back -back 2A state champs. Rossville is looking to three-peat against St. Mary's, but St. Mary's has high hopes now that they're in 1A. Keller Hurla rolls out. He finds a man, Abe Haracha. He takes it to the edge and into the end zone. Bears punch first. And that Bears offense is feeling itself they in this are. one. Hurla, deep ball to Kaysen Gomez. Big Bears gain to about the 50 yard line. Placer may have another. Hurla, Michael Gallegos, <laughs> up the hash marks like oh it's boy. a ladder. Bears oh are boy. up two scores. The Dogs' 26 game winning streak is on the line yes. here. Bears want it more, but they're stopped on fourth down thanks to Hunter Webb. Signs of life for Rossville? Signs of life indeed. Cade P. Ryan punches this one in. Dogs are on the board. St. Mary's holds on to the lead, though, beating Rossville wow. 20 to 13. Tonight. What a huge win for St. Mary's to start the year. Next game, Holton and Nemaha Central, an absolute dogfight in H Town. Thunder will score first. On the road, Cooper Hajek, not an easy guy to tackle, let me tell you. They missed the PAT, so it's 6 0. Nemon Central gets the ball back. Airmail this time. Braden Uphouse to the house. Gavin Kane with the reception. Could they run away with this one? If you think so, you don't know Holton football very well, and you don't know Garrison Booth very well. Room to run. Check out the stiff arm. Get off me. He'll go all the way. Signs of life for the Wildcats now. Not long after, Mr. Jaden Fletcher, I sped that last one up just a little bit. Wildcats <laughs> take the lead on this one. It goes down to the wire, but it's Nemaha Central fighting out the win on the road. Two great teams. Thunder take it 35-28. All right, we like to see the win there. Well, Clay Center is at Wamigo. Last year, this matchup went into triple overtime. Let's see if it goes that way again. We'll First drive out. of the game, the Tigers are not here to play around. It's Brett Loader unloading on the offense. I love it. Red Raiders get another shot. Colin Donahue rolls right. He's going to go with the long ball to Hagen Johnson, of course. Ooh, good Senior pass. season loading for him while Mio gets on the board first, 7 to nothing. Time's winding down in the first quarter. Handoff to Thomas McIntyre. Jumps over that barricade on the ground. Gets a foot in the red turf while Mio leads 14 to nothing. Tigers are clawing back. Mark Hoffman to Brody Hayes here. Hayes breaks one tackle, ditches Ooh, the other. Man. It takes three to take him a down. Shifty. Yeah. Fast forward to almost halftime, still 14 to nothing. Wamigo punts. Tigers receive, but on the way down the field, the ball comes loose. Gannon Couture falls on it. Wamigo ball again. They'll score on that drive. A nice ball to Chase Cottom right here. Red Raiders win in week one, 45 to 6. There's no place like Boomtown, Lady. Highland Park is hosting Wyandotte. New season, maybe a new outcome. Kiwan Johnson gets the snap. He's got options, but he's looking at Trey Richardson in the corner. Ref says he's out. So we'll have to try again. Johnson rolling right, finds Tremaine Savage. What a name. On the sideline for a first down. Richardson's got the ball, and Wyandotte's got his hands full. Watch out for Mr. Trey Richardson. He's got his eyes on the end zone. He will not be stopped. Touchdown, Scotts. 
They're going to keep it coming. Shovel pass to Richardson. Different play, same exact story. Sto story, scory. I almost <laughs> said both. He is scoring. Trey Richardson is going for two. And Johnson. Scoring is his story. They're um. all scoring tonight. Johnson's <laughs> keeping this one for himself. He slips right through the defenders. Highland Park, do we have an update? No, that game is still going on. Under four minutes left, though. Very interesting matchup here, Laney. Olpe won the last two A, two one A state titles, and they are at Hayden for this one. Wildcats trying to find their offense. J.C. Cummings breaks loose for a few tackles, picks up more than a few extra yards, but they don't score on that drive. Olpe now sends out their offense. Truman Bailey connects with Ethan Redeker. Eagles pick up a solid game, but they don't score either. Defense, the name of the game. Hayden punting. It is muffed. Loose ball, Hayden's Mason Charvat jumps on it. Wildcats turn it into damage. J.C. Cumming will get the handoff on the next one. He gets Hayden on the board. Really low scoring here. It is Hayden fighting out a win, 21-7 to the final. All right, well, let's look at some other scores from around the area. Silver Lakes at Riley County. Two great football programs. Lake wins. They're 1-0 with their new head coach. 28-21 to is the final. Junction City at Hayes. Blue Jays in a tough first week matchup. They fall 33-21. to Manhattan at Derby. Big time game, but Derby takes this one 26-23. to Washburn Rural, Wichita East. Junior Blues get a solid win on the road, 49-42. Emporia is at Pittsburgh. The Spartans win a, on a game-winning field goal in OT, 25-22. Shawnee Heights at Piper. Tough start for the Thunderbirds to their, their season, 21-20, to the final. Rock Creek's at southeast of Saline. The Mustangs fall in the season opener, 38-26. to Perry LeCompton at Sabet. Sabetha used that home field advantage 28-14, the final in that one. And Jeff West is at Riverside. Riverside with the win. They beat the Tigers 34-21. Mission Valley at Osage City. Osage City with a big time win, 58-6. They got a real good team again this year, Laney. All right, yeah, there's a lot of football oh today, goodness. and there's even more tomorrow. A lot of good games. Absolutely. Do we have time for the K-State preview? Yeah, we do. Let's, Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> We're going to talk K-State football, and we'll maybe talk some more about that high school after that. Big weekend of football for Kansas State. Let's talk about it. The Wildcats. South Dakota comes to Manhattan after a 7-5 and five finish last year. It's their second year in a row opening the season in the Sunflower State. Like we said, they played KU in their first game a year ago. Colin Klein entering his first full season at offensive quarter. He's feeling good. He says his confidence, though, well, it all comes from the guys around him. I'm really excited. And again, it's, it's, a, it's a credit to our players. They've anything and everything new that we've asked them to do. They've dove in, attacked it, prepared extremely hard, and, and that's where my excitement and confidence comes from is, is just their, uh, you know, their mindset, their approach, their, their mentality and, and hunger to get after it. And tomorrow will be a special day for Coach Klein for another reason. He'll be inducted into the K-State football ring of honor. Him, Arthur Brown, L. Roberson, Darren Howard, Tyler Lockett, and Larry Brown. A cool day for them. Let's talk the high school games. Highland Park up 60-47. to We're hoping they pull out that win, break that losing streak. What else stood out tonight? Yeah, I mean, obviously besides their great performance of St. Mary's taking down Rossville, especially when Huge they go win. down to 1A, I think that's crazy. And Juan Migo having such a great game without Hayden Ovia. Yes. We knew the guys trusted Colin Donahue, but... Well, Migo's really good. And then the Nemaha yeah. Central Holton game was a great one. you got to hand it to Olpe. They hung in there with Hayden, 21-7. Opie's one of the smallest 1A teams, and they hung in there with a big school like Hayden. So. Yeah, well, don't forget to follow us on social media because no matter what happens with Highland Park tonight, we'll have the updates for you on that. And uh, thank you so much for joining us for Football Frenzy tonight. We'll see you back here next Friday. That's right. Ryan's back after the break with a final look at this weekend's forecast.